you know, this is great, great saying. There are as many ways to God, as many hands to Allah, as there are human breaths. Every way is a way. I'm still having a good time. Please. You're still having a good time. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever thought of that, man, there must be this. loving God, you who have such a high opinion of yourself, you're really more silent than the night. How long will you seek a buyer for your words? Your hearers nod their heads in your presence, but you waste your time in your passion to draw them near. You say to me, don't be so envious. But how should I envy one who possesses nothing? Instruction given to the worthless is like sketching in dust. Instruct yourself in love of God and spiritual insight. <coughs> that endures like a pattern carved on solid stone. Your own self is the only pupil ever really faithful to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> All the others perish. Where will you seek them? Where? While trying to make others erudite and eminent, you are ruining yourself, oh la la, and draining what knowledge you have. But when your heart is one with reality, Huck, you may speak and not be afraid of becoming empty. And so the divine command, recite, came to the prophet, saying, O oh, righteous one, this will not fail. It is an infinite ocean. Your lap is full. Actually, I'm thinking of something, if someone would bring me Desert Wisdom, there's oh. something that's been coming that I worked on recently. There's not any left. Somebody will have to give you there. Okay. <laughs> 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 What's happening with that? Uh, Jewels of Remembrance. Kabir and Camille Helminski. Mm. Ah. Here's one. I got one. I'm doing a lot. Thanks, Dave. Nomads. We went nomad. Not mad, but nomad. Um, yeah. This was the hardest thing I've done, which is to redo something I did 15 years ago, and it's really massively redone. It'll fool you because all the, many of the titles are the same, and when you read what's there, it's it's quite a bit different. Even wiser now. It's better. It's clearer. It's the, the body prayers, as we call them, are now meditations. But they're much more clear and, uh, yeah. And I, I worked on a few more bits from, uh, from uh, Quran, or Quran, in the same fashion I've been working with the Aramaic and the Hebrew. 
and this is one from the last chapter. And this is a small section, actually. It's just one verse uh, from Surah Al-Ma'ida, which is Surah number five. That's one of the later surahs. Uh, mostly I was looking, I chose some ones from earlier surahs, which are later <laughs> in the Quran. Tazneem knows what I'm talking about. Um, you know, the difficulty in reading the Quran is that it's in sort of almost not quite inverse order. It's actually in order of size. And uh, it's not really clear why that is. There's different scholarly opinions about that. But the early surahs are actually toward the back. And you know them because they're short. And they're short cosmological, you could say, or deep, short, pithy zaps, you could say, of Muhammad's, of the inspiration through Muhammad. When Muhammad was still, they were still a small, very small community, smaller than the number of people in this room for about 10 years. Maybe, you know, 20, 30 people, all the families together. It was very, very small for a long period of time. And then Muhammad's just giving very, very, it's what's coming through is a very simple message, very simple, very simple. And then they get called to Medina, you know the story, and Medina's in, you know, in a big chaos, and they say, well, we can't do any worse, so we'll call to the Prophet, la ilaha illallah, it seems like he's got a solution. And, you know, all these tribes and clans are all warring, and maybe he can organize this better. And then Muhammad has to try to organize a whole big area of different clans and people and as I sometimes say to my Christian friends, whom I have to speak to a lot from Aramaic Jesus standpoint, Muhammad has to be sort of like Jesus and St. Paul together. <laughs> that is, he's got, to give the, he's got to give the universal message has to come through as wisdom. And another sort of wisdom is how you deal with people's foibles and you know, dietary problems and gender confusion and all that, <laughs> and politics and all that. And St. Paul says the same thing. I'm not actually as, as, I'm not that down on St. Paul because, and it's pure voice, it this Paul, that Paul. Paul could easily be the same Paul. It's just that he says in the Corinthians, I think it is, you know, I know the mysteries I've studied. I know the inner mysteries. And he even quotes part of the Gospel of Thomas, which hardly anybody's noticed except for Elaine Pagels. <laughs> and, and, but he says, but I'm so busy sorting out all your, your earth plane problems, your, your, your politics and who's going to be in charge and your, you know, your sexual problems and your diet and all that. I don't have time to teach you the mysteries. I'm just dealing with your, your everyday stuff. And so, so this is what we find then in the later surahs of the Quran. We call them the Medinan surahs. They're long. They're long because it's, it, <coughs> wisdom is coming through to deal with stuff. You know, it's just that simple. And it would be helpful always sometimes to know what the stuff is, but we don't really have annotated Qurans on that level. Sometimes Yusuf Ali or some other commentators will tell you in the footnotes, well, this was revealed at this time or this time, but you really have to dig to find out what the situation, the in situ part of that particular surah was. That's a long explanation, but that's why it's difficult to read, because it's not in order and it's not organized the way we might like it to be organized. But if you stick with it, there's wisdom there all through. It's just that some of the wisdom is really was for that time, for that place, and those people. It's still universal wisdom, but specific to that time, just as is St. Paul, and just as this large swathes of the Hebrew scriptures as well. Yeah. Anybody's ever worn linen or eat shri and shrimp lately? You know, <laughs> violated a large part of Leviticus, actually. So, <laughs> nonetheless. <laughs> Um, so this is a little bit of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Um, uh, surah Al-Ma'idah is a very long surah, and a, a big part, I was told of digression, uh, Al-Ma'idah means the table, the table that is spread, the table that is open. And it's named after a little anecdote about Jesus that's in this particular surah, which retells part of John, but in a different way. If you remember the bit of John, I'll get to this eventually. If you, <laughs> this is good. You'll like this. If you remember the bit of John after the after the loaves and fishes thing. Jesus go, leaves with his disciples. He doesn't like the whole crowd scene, and he leaves on a boat. They go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and then they come back, hoping that the furor had died down. But instead, actually, 
people want him to, quote, do it again. <laughs> do, do the loaves and fishes thing again. And then we'll believe in you. You know, then we'll really believe in you. Oh, yeah, right, you know. And, so, and, and then Jesus, Yeshua, tries to shock them. And he has this whole thing about, unless you eat my body and drink my blood and, you know, and, so you, and he's giving them this very mystical teaching, but they're thinking, oh my God, he's a cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's sort of filtering away, you can see the crowd sort of filtering away, and the disciples are saying, you know, Master, these are really hard sayings. And, you know, they're not sort of getting it. Can you sort of lighten up a little bit? And he's just, he gets even more extreme, and, and everybody filters away. And finally, it's just the disciples, and you can imagine Jesus is very happy. <laughs> In Sur Al-Maida, there's a little view into this, I think. Um, Quranic Jesus stuff is very much influenced by Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of John, primarily. These, th this is the great influence in the Jesus stories in Quran. But not necessarily Western Christianity, more sort of the, that non-Roman Empire Christianity. So Sur Al-Maida says, they, they came to Yeshua and they said, you know, can you provide for us a table spread with all these things, and then we'll believe. And Yeshua, Isa, as he's called in Quran, he goes to Allah and he says, you know, should I you know, do it? You know, is it good? Or, and Allah says, okay, do it. But if they do it, but if they still don't listen to you, if they still don't really get it, believe, so to speak, then I'm going to make things really difficult for them. And they're going to have, they're going to have trouble like no one's had before. And then the surah goes on to something else. Now, toward the end, it has this, which is a beautiful section that I like, um, very deep. I'll read you the Yusuf Ali part, and then sort of the expansion from the Arabic. Um, Yusuf Ali is one of the main translators of Quran, My own, the, and he really did his best. He tried to make the Quran sound like the Bible. That's the only thing. But he did that for a very good reason. He wanted it to be more friendly to Western ears who were attuned to the King James Bible. So he did a lot of stuff to put it into sort of King James English, but the footnotes are worth the whole price of admission. They're very mystical. There are other good translations, but just for comparison. To each among you we have prescribed, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, to each among you we have prescribed a law and an open way. If Allah had so willed, he would have made you a single people. But his plan is to test you in what he has given you. So strive as in a race in all virtues. The goal of you all is to Allah. It is he that will show you the truth of the matters in which you dispute. And if you look at this bit in the Quran, it says, Fima atakum fastabikul hayrat. That means um, strive, compete with one another only in this. Who is helping each other fulfill khayrat? Hayrat is based on high, but with a little bit more material beginning of the sound. Who is helping the next person fulfill, embody energy, fulfill their purpose in life, you could translate this to, embody life energy in their own way, in their own best way. Which amongst you is, is helping one another? And not, not excluding, not, in not including only humans, but all the whole of nature is included in this. Are we helping nature to fulfill its destiny, its purpose, or are we standing in the way? And this is very, very much exactly what Genesis actually says mm. when it was mistranslated as um, be fruitful, multiply, dominate, and subdue the earth. It doesn't say that at all. It says, be fr it says, yes, learn, you will be fruitful, you will multiply, learn how to master your own sense of individuality, uh, and then it says, Waki uh, Beshua, Wa Redu Be, help, you, you are rule with, along with, and within all of creation. There's never a sense in which the preposition bait has ever been used to mean over in, in the whole history of ancient Hebrew. I've asked a number of rabbis about this. So it says, you're going to be ruling and reigning with all the beings that were created before you. Help them to fulfill their purpose. Ki Beshua, that Shoah means to redeem. And to redeem means to help a being to fulfill him, her, its destiny, its living destiny. That's what we're supposed to be doing. But, you know, they couldn't imagine that it would ever mean that. So it became this, you know, permission on 
for some people took it as a permission to go and colonize people and you know, Native Americans, you're not using the earth, so we have a right to dominate colonize you. Colonize and convert. Colonize, convert, and use, it, <coughs> use the earth. But the same thing is here in Quran. And this is, again, rendering some of the alternate meanings of the Arabic. So it's sort of tafsir, tawil at the same time. For all peoples, we have prescribed two medicines. The first, a clear pointer to the watering place of unity liberating ways and laws modeled on natural harmony. And the second medicine is an open, well-traveled road, allowing you to track, footstep by footstep, the impulse seated in you at creation. If desired, the one could have created you as a monoculture, one identical community, like Roman numerals one lined up together. <laughs> Apologies to Ibn Arabi. But in order to honor you as a test experiment, the one bestowed on you the blessing of diversity. So compete with each other in this race. The first one wins who creates the most good for others, helping them to embody the original life force, khairat, gifted within as their purpose in life. And then it says, illallahi marjiukum jamian, illallahi which is translated literally as toward the one. Not, il, not illallah, which is from the Arabic, but illallahi, which means toward the one. It's a sense of motion. Like alhamdulillah is a sense, sense of motion toward the one, process. Mabudlillah is a sense of process toward the one. People argue about it's mabudlillah, mabud Allah. It's too, it's, it's, they're both good, it's just they're just different. Toward the one, you were all returning together. Jamian, it says, like based on al jami. <clears throat> Toward the one, you were all returning together as one gathering of all beings, all creatures. By bringing what is inside you into the light, the one will prophesy through you the actual state of affairs, giving news of the race results and repairing the breaks, wounds, and delaying disagreements that have arisen along the way toward your shared home. <coughs> Towards the one, you are all returning together as one gathering of all creatures. By bringing what is inside you into the light, the one will prophesy through you the actual state of affairs, giving news of the race results, and repairing the breaks, wounds, and delaying disagreements that have arisen along the way toward your shared home. Illallahi marju kum jamiyan. Yeah, alhamdulillah. So, um, yeah, it's one of the, I think, beautiful passages of the Quran. Um, and there's, there's many like this, actually. So it's worth diving into. Um, Thank you for bringing this to us in this moment. Alhamdulillah. Let's, well, we could, if you could hand me that. Thanks. Fima atakum, Fima atakum, Fasta bikul, Fasta bikul, Chayrat. If you're going to compete, compete in helping each other fulfill the purpose. Fima atakum, Fima atakum, Fasta bikul, Fasta bikul, Chayrat. If you want to make it easy, you can do Chayrat, but it's really it's that embodiment of the high very deeply in our being that was seated there at the first beginning. And it's really not a competition. 
this sort of an irony. Fima ta kum fasta be cool. Fima ta kum fasta be cool. Fima ta kum fasta be cool. Love, love. 
returning together from our home back to our home. All beings together. This comes to me back to me. One creature. When we get to eat nice and figure out how to pack it. Uh -huh. so much. Very unexpected. inspiration and, and meaning and meaningfulness and, and, and life and if they cannot pass if they can't get past uh, you know well I don't know if it's fanafi the rasul but the but the rasul is in fanafi Allah uh, the, 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 it, that's how it is <laughs> that, that's how it is <laughs> yeah. so so the one who is in the fanna, uh, fanna fi Allah, right? That's what that's referring to. Is this light uh, represented by the, by the star, uh, the, symbolically the star of the divine light shining in the Prophet's heart? Mm -hmm. May that light be reflected, passing through, passing through the hearts of the devotees. Mm -hmm. yeah. Transmission. Y'all come. <laughs> <laughs> and thou comest on earth with a message. As a dove from above when, when Dharma decays. And when is Dharma decaying? What is the half-life of Dharma? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that question. <laughs> That's a koan. <laughs> In some ways, it's every moment. It's every, it's every moment in some fashion. In reference to our own purpose, is why I answered this question. You know, 
in reference back to the practical question, what is ours to do, what is mine to do, of, you could say, rebuilding, reclaiming, uh, whatever way you want to put it. Um, tikkun olam, as it's put in the Jewish tradition, healing, healing the universe is what part of that is mine. Um, Mershit mm -hmm. Sam says, you know, with um, writing in 1942 or something like that, um, when the power of fiction money has become so dominant and when the spirit of you know, guidance has gone, ever feels like it's going ever further and further away, without speech, without silence, without speech, without silence, let us demonstrate. Let's demonstrate. Which part of it is mine to do? As above, death from above when Dharma decays. Which also indicates that one is sent. Right? To every people, a prophet has been sent. To every people, a prophet has been sent. The message has been given so many times. <clears throat> and, and this part of the reference of the, of the quotes, decaying of, of Dharma, is rather, well not rather, I want to say, let's say that it has become so overshadowed by the, by the constriction of, of materiality <clears throat> that it goes underground. It just, so it becomes like that living water, it's always living, that living water that Pure Worship describes as this arising uh, new fount of, of the message of the, uh, of the life. Uh, and, and so it never dies, you see. It, it may seep into that, that aquifer. So in that sense, it doesn't die. And it, it'll arise here and there. And the thing about, for, for me, the, the Tassawuf is referring to, to a wisdom that a little bit like I was saying about giving uh, practices to Marids, <clears throat> that the message comes in a languaging by which, inshallah, by which those who are to receive the message will get it. If it was given in Greek over here, and you, and you take that over there, it's a different language. They, you know, it's the message, but they won't get it. You're not speaking their language, or, you know, we want to give an instruction to to a to a young child. It's not the same as talking to a university graduate. So we have to know how to how to give the message if we're to if we're to serve. That means, oddly enough, even though we're talking about giving the message, what it means is being receptive. Back to that fana, being receptive. As I said, if you walk into a new community, watch, observe, listen, feel, feel the space, and then you'll know what can be received. You might have a great big gift to bring, but if you, you give it all without that capacity uh, to receive it, then that's that part that gets uh, wasted in, in a way. And the Quran says also, you know, there's no the animals are a community like you, the birds are a community like you, nature is a community like you, and if we believe the other ayat, that says all of them had messengers and prophets, <laughs> or do also. You know, they had, you know, they all do or are, and we don't even know half the time. You know, what, what language is that that's being received? It's so much bigger than we can even imagine. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prescottians. Thank you. Press press Scotsmen and women. Kalma? What do you think? Yeah. Okay.